Last time, I explained how the entropy of an information source tells us that, on average, we will need at least that many bits in order to represent a symbol of the information source. For example, a fair die with six symbols has an entropy of about 2.585 bits. If we tried using only two bits to represent the symbols of the die, we would have a problem because two bits only have four possible states, and that's not enough to cover six symbols. But if we used three bits, then three bits have eight possible states, which is enough to cover six symbols. Now, when we assign a sequence of bits to represent a symbol, that sequence of bits is called a code word. For example, the code word for symbol 1 is 000. The code word for symbol 2 is 001. And there's nothing special about that. We can mix and match code words and symbols. It would be perfectly okay if the code word for symbol 1 was 001 and the code word for symbol 2 was 000. And an entire set of code words is called a code. So if we had a message that's a series of symbols from a fair die, we can encode that message using each symbol's code word. For a message that contains symbols 3, 5, 1, 4, 2, 6, 4, and 1 in that order, we can replace each symbol with its code word. So the message is represented as a sequence of bits. And what you'll notice about these code words is they're all three bits long. So if we want to decode the sequence of bits into the original message, we will read that sequence in blocks of three. The first three bits, 0, 1, 0, that's the code word for symbol 3. The next three bits, that's the code word for symbol 5, and so on. That's how we reconstruct the original message. Now, this works just fine, but it's inefficient. Each symbol has a code word that's three bits long, so obviously we're using an average of three bits for every symbol. But when we calculated the entropy of a fair die, it came out to 2.585 bits, meaning that on average we'll need at least 2.585 bits to represent each of its symbols. We're using three, which is more than that, so it works. But just like entropy tells us we're going to need at least that many bits, this also means we don't need much more than that either. We could actually use fewer bits. I know we already went over why using two bits for each symbol's code word wouldn't work. But what if we didn't use the same number of bits for every code word? What if some were longer or shorter than others? We could assign the shorter code words to the more common symbols, and use the longer ones for the less common symbols. That way, the symbols that occur most frequently would take up less space, and the symbols that occur less frequently would take up more space. But that would be okay, because they're less frequent. This is better than every code word having the same length regardless of frequency. And there's a method we can use to create an improved set of code words for symbols. It's called Huffman coding. Although it works better for information sources with symbols that have unequal probabilities, it will still work for an information source with equally probable symbols, like a fair die. And this is what I'll be using for the first demonstration of Huffman coding. We're going to start by making a list of every symbol's probability in descending order, from the largest at the top to the smallest at the bottom. For a fair die, every symbol's probability is 1 in 6, so that's pretty simple. We're going to take the two probabilities on the bottom, which would be the smallest two probabilities, and add them together to combine them into a new probability, 2 in 6, which I will indicate by coloring it blue. And we're going to create another list to the right of the first one. For this list, we're going to carry over the probabilities from the first list, as well as the new probability we created by merging two probabilities from the first list. So this second list is going to contain one fewer item than the first list, because two items from the first list have been merged into one. And this list will also be sorted in descending order. So 2 in 6 will be at the top above 1 in 6, 1 in 6, 1 in 6, and 1 in 6. And we're going to do this again, combining the bottom two probabilities, 1 in 6 and 1 in 6, into 2 in 6. And we're going to create a third list with only four items, sorted in descending order. So this combined probability of 2 in 6 also must be near the top. 
Once again, we're going to combine the two smallest probabilities into two in six, and create another list with only three items. All of them are two in six. And again, we're going to combine the two on the bottom to get four in six. And we're going to create another list with only two items, four in six at the top and two in six underneath. We are going to stop here. We stop when we end up with a list of only two items. Now that part is done, and we're going to start assigning binary numbers to each symbol. For the final list with only two items, the first item will be given the bit 0. The second one will have the bit 1. And we're going to follow 4 and 6 back to the two probabilities it came from, the bottom 2 and 6 and 2 and 6, in the list to the immediate left. And since 4 in 6 was numbered 0, the numbers for these two are each going to start with 0. And for that 0, we're going to put 0 on the end for the first one, and 1 for the second one. They're numbered 0, 0, and 0, 1. The number for 2 in 6 from the last list will be carried over to this list, so it also has a number of 1. And we're going to continue with the next list to the left. The bottommost 2 in 6 from the previous list came from 1 in 6 and 1 in 6 in this list. 2 in 6 was numbered 0, 1, so the numbers for these two will start with 0, 1. For the first one, we'll put a 0 on the end, the second one will have a 1. They're numbered 0, 1, 0 and 0, 1, 1. And from the previous list, we're going to carry over the number 1 for 2 and 6 in this list, as well as the number 0, 0 for the other 2 and 6 in this list. And we'll move on to the next list to the left. The second 2 and 6 from the previous list came from the bottommost 1 and 6 and 1 and 6 in this list. 2 and 6 was numbered 0, 0, so these two will be numbered 0, 0, 0 and 0, 0, 1. And the numbers for the other 2 and 6, 1 and 6 and 1 and 6, will be carried over from the previous list. Finally, we're all the way back to the first list that we started with. The bottommost 1 and 6 and 1 and 6 came from the 2 and 6 in the previous list, which had a number of 1. So these two will have numbers of 1, 0 and 1, 1. Carrying over the numbers for everything else from the previous list, we now have a code word for every symbol. Notice that two of the symbols have code words that are only two bits long, and the other four symbols have three-bit code words. This is an improvement over all six symbols having three-bit code words. So let's use our original message of symbols 3, 5, 1, 4, 2, 6, 4, and 1 in that order. In the original code, each one used a 3-bit code word, and there were 8 symbols, so it used a total of 24 bits. Now let's see what happens when we encode the message using Huffman coding. It uses only 22 bits. This is an improvement, and it's more efficient. It's about 92% of the size of the message if it was encoded with all 3-bit code words. The average number of bits used per symbol with 3-bit code words was 3 bits, of course. For this Huffman coding, we can calculate the number of bits in each code word weighted by the probability of the symbol associated with the code word to get the average number of bits used per symbol. It's 2.6 repeating, which is better than 3 bits, and it's getting close to the 2.585 bits of entropy that the fair die has. And that's pretty good.